So you use that in your music? Yeah. That there was a new one from the Dirty Projectors called Little Bubble Before. That was Laura Marling with Wildfire. You're listening to Girls Can Tell here on Four Triple Z with Remy and Bell. And we're also joined by Lena, aka Avaxa. Is Hi. that how you pronounce it? Am I saying it right? Yeah, Avaxa. I had good. <laughs> how have you been? How's your day? Great. Rushed to getting here, but finally here and happy to be here. Yeah, it's a bit difficult to find some parking around there, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Um, so we're here to talk about your uh, new single, Androgen? Androgen, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just came out yesterday and I've had so much good feedback from it, which I'm really, really happy about. Um, I wasn't sure because it is kind of a more alternative or kind of like a niche electronic style. So I was really surprised with a lot of people that usually like indie or rock or um, different sorts of music still had a really positive response to it. Yeah. So have you been making music for a long time or is um, this like your first sort of... In it. Probably about a year and a half working on producing. Mm -hmm. When I was like you know, a teenager and a kid, I learned bits of piano and guitar here and there, but you know, was never really too inspired or too good at it. Um, but I think after I started DJing, producing became a lot more realistic or a lot more reachable as a goal. So yeah, just kind of put an insane amount of effort into it and learned it all and yeah, got got really into it. So how long have you been DJing? Because I know you were DJing in a couple of places here in the valley and you DJed at Jungle Love and all sorts of festivals and stuff. Yeah, lots of events and things. Probably uh, two years or so. Okay, maybe. so it's fairly recent. Yeah, yeah, not too long at all. Um, cool. <laughs> um, so I heard that you've been traveling a lot in Berlin and Israel and stuff, so tell us about that experience and how it changed your view on music. Well, a lot of the reason I went overseas was because I was in Brisbane doing my thing, had my regular life, and wasn't really getting a lot of things done that I found really important, so I wasn't dedicating a lot of time to things like producing that I really wanted to learn better and get a lot better at, but because I had all my life and I had all these commitments, responsibilities, etc., I wasn't dedicating the time to it, so I found that I actually had to leave Brisbane in order to really pay attention to, to dedicate my time to learning about that in you know these foreign environments where there isn't all of the things that you do in your day-to-day -day life. You just have to knuckle down and really do the work. Yeah, we were talking about it before. You brought along your little handheld recorder about you kind of out in the world recording some sounds. What kind of influence does that take in your music? Do you put those sounds directly in or do you kind of channel that? Absolutely. I mean, wherever you are, the city has a different sound, whether that's an actual sound of the street or wherever you are or whether that's kind of the energy that you get from being in a different environment, those sounds can really be reflected in, in different tracks and in different bits of music. So you know, even, even if it's not like a direct sound that I've actually recorded in that location, that location will often make me feel a certain way and then that feeling will be like represented. So you can kind of take certain things and put them through this massive loop and then you know, ha have the export be something completely different but still re really representative of the experiences that you're having in a certain location. Like, you know, when I was in Berlin, I was, you know, going out clubbing, like, all, all through the weekend and listening to this world-class techno and, you know, not really, not really drinking, just going to these clubs and just dancing my ass off and yep. just absorbing all of this amazing electronic music. Um, and then, you know, I'd go home during the week and just spend my whole time learning how to produce. I had, I had three goals. I was like, produce music, learn German, and write about my feelings, and I got, a lot, I got a lot of all of those three done, so yeah, it was a very productive time. Yeah. Did um, travelling change the, the kind of music that you were making, like were you inspired by music from other cultures? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I had a, quite a strong vision before I left, and once I got over there, I was experiencing these, this more electronic music and more, t more techno and more really good techno because in Australia there's, there's a lot of good electronic music but there's not that just amazing techno that there is in Berlin. So to be able to have the kind of foundation that I was coming from in Australia which is more of like the, the ambient or slow like you know the, the auroras, the willow beats, the grimes, the London grammar, um, those sorts of artists and then to take that and to put a massive techno spin on it and to be able to come up with this contrasting collaborative sort of amalgamation between those two genres was really interesting. Do you feel that because you, um, so you are producing your own music and writing, you get a bit more sort of freedom with experimenting? Like if you had someone else on board, it might almost be a bit restricted? Absolutely. I mean, I'm the only person making every single decision in regards to this music, so I can take 
massive chances and be very experimental and there's no one to say like oh that's a, that's, like, that's a bit weird like do you think that's really marketable like there's, there's none of those voices and yeah. whenever I come up with those voices I can recognize those and counteract them and say no like let's let's keep pushing this and let's keep seeing if this quirky idea can actually go somewhere really cool. Um, so tell us a bit about the single like what influenced it and where, where does it come from what's it about? Yeah so I mean it's a completely instrumental track but it starts out like very dreamy, people describe it as kind of underwatery and floaty, all of these sorts of things. And then it kind of all of a sudden gets into this very aggressive, like lots of bass, all of these really delicious elements come in. And I think that contrast is something that I like to play on a lot in my music and what I'll play on a lot in future tracks to be able to get that contrast and have things coming at you from different areas that you may not have expected to be in the one track. Cool, well we're going to take a listen to it now. This is Androgen by Avaxa. You're listening to Girls Can Tell here on Quadruple Z. Spring. Cool. We'll come back and we'll like talk about the gig and stuff as well. Cool. Have you been here at Quadruple Z before? Like on a show? Not on a show. I came in, yeah, just yeah. to sit in and have a chill. <laughs> I mean, like this, I had a really like, weird story about how I wanted to sit in like a bath of rice pudding and I think Claire who was here just looked at me like, <laughs> like all right moving right along. <laughs> no, I don't even remember that, that's funny. <laughs>
all done like at your home or? Yeah, just on my computer or like, you know, the studio is anywhere. Like I have photos of like where I'd set up my studio and it would be like a bunch of a bunk bed in a dorm room or like on this table with like these wild dogs sitting next to the table in Thailand somewhere or like just random spots. Yeah. Because yeah, I was focused on making it all really portable and having like a recording device, some headphones, a computer. Because in Brisbane, like, I had all these like beat pads, pieces of equipment, keyboards, all these things that I wasn't really using, and really hard to connect, and like that, it, it, it just made it all too confusing. So I wasn't actually focusing on getting the production really good. Yeah. And so by taking all that away, making it really simple, and you know, coming back and focusing on the degree. Androgen by Avaxa. We still got Lena here in the studio with us, so girls can tell. Oh, it's, getting, it's getting a stressful day already. <laughs> Feeling all the stresses. All right, um, so you are going to be performing really, really soon at the Foundry. Really, really soon. February 2 is the date of this big launch that I'm putting on for the release of my new single, and it's going to be wild. Like, I, I, also, I often find that it's not just a musical project, it's this all encompassing sensory experience. So it's really like, how can I incorporate all of these different aspects to really encompass all of your senses and to really get you involved in the moment? So I have all of these ideas. I don't know how I'll be able to enact them all in the time that I have, but I have all of these ideas. Like I have a, this ballet dancer coming along. I want to serve like a little dessert. I want to put some like smells in the room and pass like things for you to touch and like pass around. Yeah. Um, I'm bringing this really amazing artist, Joy and Sparks, up from Melbourne. I have so much faith in her. I found her oh, maybe a few months back when I was down there and she was playing as part of this Ableton performance and I was like, walk, like walking past and I kind of heard her playing on the, the foreshore bit of the river down there and I was just blown away. She does these like amazing echoey vocals and all of this looping and it was the first artist that I'd seen in a while that really kind of got it, like was so committed to the search for the new sound and wasn't just doing the, the mainstream usual formula that a lot of um, musicians do and yeah was just blown away by her creativity and how raw and fresh the sound was so I'm really excited to have her performing as well in February too. Yeah as far as your own set goes is it just you up on stage or are you bringing along a few people to help you out? No it'll just be me I'll be doing like like looping and triggering yeah. different samples and pads I have like a, a keyboard I have a keytar. I had when you had a keytar. <laughs> I just, like I just got it it's solving all of my connectivity issues which is great and I'm just so so ready to kind of bust it out on the keytar. and yeah as I said I've also got this ballet dancer um or the contemporary dancer to do some like cool improv things and kind of distract the crowd while I do cool electronic stuff Excellent. All right, well, we can't wait uh, to head along. Uh, we're actually giving away five tickets, aren't we? Yes, absolutely. So anyone who would like to head along to Vox's uh, music debut, I want to I want to call it. It's going to be a bit of a spectacular event, I'm <laughs> thinking. Ballet dancers, <laughs> key tars. Like, yeah, we got it. Not one. <laughs> exactly. It's going to be great. So <gasps> make sure you give us a call, 32521555, during the song break, if you'd like to grab one of those tickets, and make sure you have your sub card number with you as well. Thank you so much for coming yeah, in. Thank Where you. can people find your music as well before we head off? I have a website, avaxa.co or Facebook, avaxa.dark or SoundCloud, avaxa or it's like Spotify, iTunes, literally any media website that you want, I'm there. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, we're going to head into a new one from the XX because we're having a bit of a chat about them during the break. This is a, one of their new album called I See You. This one's called Replica. You're listening to Triple Z. Oh, thank you so much for coming in. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you for having me. No, no problem. Um, do you mind if we grab a photo for our Instagram? Yeah, I would love that. We so too much. have some social media <laughs> things. I uh, <laughs> brought this poster just for this event. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. 